Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got John Moore on the phone with me today. And who's John Moore? Well, back in October 2004, he made a DVD for us called Terrorism, What the Government Isn't Telling You. And then in January of 2005, he made another DVD called Signs in the Sun, Moon, and the Stars. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. His background is he was an intelligence analyst for the U.S. Army. He is a homicide detective, private detective, radio host. And he's got some really good stuff on this mystery planet. As you know, folks, I believe that there has to be a mystery planet out there. There has to be another planet out there. It's the only thing could be that answers the solution or the possibility of fulfilling all of the prophecies. We're going to talk about that. So, John Moore, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Thank you, Pastor Stan. Good to be here. (laughs) Okay. All right. So you think that there is some kind of a mystery planet out there maybe even outside of our solar system in the deep, dark reaches of space. Is that yes. correct? Yes, sir. I, and why I do, do you think I, that? I've confirmed that through private confidential sources uh, a number of different ways. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that it's out there. What, tell me why. Well, my private confidential sources uh, made their own inquiries. They're connected to the lettered agencies, as we call them. And they verified that in 1979, NASA, the National Avionics and Space Administration, sent up the Pioneer 10 space probe to a specific part of space to look for this object, and they found it in 1979, and they've been tracking it ever since. I have an interesting DVD in my library um, where Dr. Robert Harrington, supervising astronomer of the United States Naval Observatory, is being interviewed in his office at the United States Naval Observatory talking about the mystery planet or any of the other 20 names that you want to call it, as a matter of scientific fact, not scientific speculation, giving its size, three to five times the size of Earth, its orbit, which is a, an elliptical orbit, very similar to the one that Zechariah Sitchin found out about from the ancient Babylonian records, and uh, mentioning that it has a far larger iron-nickel core than our Earth does, giving it a lot more bang for its buck in terms of its effect. Oh, wait, 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 hang gravity. on, you just said something real important. So it would have a stronger gravitational or magnetic pull. Yes, Is that sir. what you're saying? Yes, sir. In other words, it doesn't have to be the same size as Earth to have the same gravitational pull. It can be smaller. But in this case, it's three to five times larger than the Earth. How much stronger is the gravitational pull? Do we know? Well, we know from past events uh, that are recorded in the Bible and other places that it's enough to cause dramatic uh, harm to our planet, which it does about every 3,600 years. The two recordings in the Bible, as best I can tell as a non-Bible scholar, one would be the the most recent, the uh, exodus of Moses out of Egypt, which was about 3,600 years ago, and the great flood of Noah, which was about 7,200 years ago. Other cultures left calendars and written records recording basically the same events recorded in our Bible taking place at the same time. There's lots of evidence that the gravitational force and electrical interaction is more than enough to cause dramatic harm to our planet, which is done before. Okay, tell me more. Convince me it's out there. I want to hear all of that information. (laughs) Okay. The summer of 2005, I was having lunch with a friend of mine I served with in the Army. He's a dual-service veteran, also served in the Navy. And during that conversation, he told me about a classified briefing he attended in the U.S. Navy in 1985. At that briefing, he was shown a map of North America with new coastlines, with the Atlantic Coast, Gulf Coast, and Pacific Coast being underwater 50 to 100 miles inland, depending on, on where they were and how, qu- how high it got how quickly, which, of course, is where more than half the people of this country live in those coastal areas. They were told, gentlemen, these events will happen in your lifetime, not your children's, not your grandchildren's. These events will happen in your lifetime, and when it comes time to retire, you might want to consider moving to one of the known safe havens, and I mentioned the Arkansas-Missouri Ozarks and the border region of Idaho, Montana, as another safe region. Now, since then, I've met and interviewed and debriefed about two dozen more of these Navy veterans, all of whom were at the classified briefings beginning in 1979, all of whom saw the classified Navy map showing the coastal areas underwater, all of whom relocated to the Arkansas-Missouri Ozarks when they retired, due to having attended these briefings. Now, they weren't told what would cause these things. 
the Navy veterans were in the folding chairs in the audience. They weren't the scientists. But it doesn't take a whole lot of extrapolation or a whole lot of connecting the dots to figure out there's nothing else with the kind of power necessary to make these waters slosh out of their basins other than a planetary-sized object moving through our solar system and do what, unfortunately, it does about every 3,600 years, which is to cause a shift of true north, not magnetic north, which is moving dramatically, but true north. Uh, 15, 20 degrees is all it would take. It wouldn't take a 90-degree a or 180-degree flip. All it would take would be a 15 or 20-degree shift in a rapid fashion to cause these oceans to slosh out of their basins. Well, and Revel- cause the flooding. But, but Isaiah 24, verses 1 and 19 says the earth will turn upside down. Well, to me, that, that. that means more like an exact 180 shift. A 180 shift would cause dramatic flooding of biblical proportions, as we sometimes say. Well, that's the point. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. Convince me. Can tell me more. I believe you're right. I believe you're right well, on. Okay. But i got to have enough to convince some other people. Go- Here's some simple Google searches anybody can do to convince themselves that the U.S. government, as part of continuity of government contingency planning, is moving what they consider critical infrastructure to the middle of the country. Here's your Google searches. First Google search, CIA and the word Denver. You'll find the 2005 press releases. They've been changed since then. The first one said that they were moving from Langley, Virginia, 85 feet above sea level to Denver because they wanted to break up the good old boy network that's been in place for so many years. Everybody, including their own people, were laughing at that. Now they simply say for operational reasons. Second Google search, NSA and Denver, NSA and Utah, NSA and uh, Georgia. They're they're scattering and moving to high ground. Atlanta, Georgia will be the new eastern capital of the United States. It's It's the highest altitude major city east of the Mississippi. Denver will be the western capital and the primary capital for the new government once it's reconstituted in Denver. Another Google search, Plum Island and the word Kansas. When you do that search, you'll find they're moving the animal research facility that takes care of things like anthrax and foot and mouth disease from Plum Island in the Atlantic Ocean to Manhattan, Kansas, which is, of course, in the middle of the most productive agricultural real estate on the planet. Not a wise thing to do in most people's opinion. Now, my private sources stand tell me that there's a quarter million mile debris field on either side of the uh, mystery planet, uh, a debris field of rocks the size of pickup trucks, rocks the size of Rhode Island, and they will cause great harm. We're all Because of satellite imagery and, and other technologies, we continue to find very large craters all over the world, including the United States. There's a 12-mile-wide crater here in the county I live in that wasn't known to even exist until satellite imaging was able to verify it. Okay, you said something very important there. You said that there's a 250,000-mile debris field that follows this. Now, the Bible says that the heavens will withdraw and they'll roll back like a scroll, and the stars from heaven will fall as a fig tree casting forth its untimely figs. Now, to me, I believe that that is a debris field that we are going through the orbit of the Earth goes through this debris field, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. In other words, various size debris or rocks or, or, rocks or uh, asteroids, whatever you want to call them, right. are hitting the Earth at various places all over the Earth. And that's also associated with all of the other signs. Now, let me give you a brief overview of the signs. I'll, I'll make it real brief because folks have been listening. They already heard this, okay? The sun goes out. I found seven verses that says the sun goes out. I've also found 13 verses that says that the moon goes out. I found 14 verses that the the stars withdraw their shining. In other words, they're still out there. I mean, there's nothing that can make all of the stars that are eons out there in space all go out. Yet Ezekiel 32, 7 says he'll cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. Now, I believe the covering of the heaven could also be that debris field because he also says in that same verse, he'll cover the sun with a cloud. So that's the debris field. However, how do you make the stars of heaven withdraw their shining? Now, you just said something also that this has a thicker iron nickel core, so it has a higher gravitational pull than the earth, and it's also three to five times bigger than the earth. So would it be safe to assume that this gravitational pull 
of this planet, which, by the way, what is the name of this planet? Well, it's got probably about a dozen names. In the Bible, it's called Wormwood. It's frequently called the Tenth Planet. It's also called the Destroyer. Many cultures have a similar a What is NASA's name. name for it? Typically, it's called it's Planet X. Okay, that's what they refer to. Okay, Planet X. All right, so it has this supreme field, and it has a very strong gravitational pull. Now, we know that light can be bent through gravity. So what makes sense to me is this planet at exactly the right size, gravitational pull at exactly the right orbit or position in space could begin to pull the light of the stars so that the light of the stars is no longer reaching Earth. That would make it appear as the stars withdraw their shining. Okay, you can't put out all the stars. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Right. Well, in addition, I didn't mention this. Uh, there's a cloud of red dust. We'll be right back after this message. John Moore was an intelligence analyst in the U.S. Army and is now a homicide detective, private detective, and a radio host. He has been investigating Earth changes since 2000 and has some startling discoveries. John has proof there is a mystery planet heading toward our solar system, which is causing the ice caps to melt, stopping the Gulf Stream, causing tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, extreme hot and cold weather, and he says the governments of the world know about it and are preparing underground survival facilities. Included is a representation of a classified map showing safe locations. And now, back to the program. As the stars withdraw their shining. Okay, you can't put out all the stars. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Right. Well, in addition, I didn't mention this. Uh, there's a cloud of red dust that uh, basically surrounds the 10th planet, uh, this, the, uh, mystery, the mystery planet. Uh, that's thick enough to block out light as well. That would also explain the oceans of the Earth turning blood red and everything in the oceans dying. Yes, sir. And that, and that is verified when, the, when, the, when Moses and the Hebrews saw the River Nile turn red. Uh, the people in, in South America, Asia, and Northern Europe all left written records and calendars verifying the same thing happened where they were. Wow. Wow, that is just awesome. And that's, that's, re awesome. that's recorded by uh, Emmanuel Velikowski in his books. Okay, let's go back to this 1979. I've heard that before. The Pioneer was sent out by NASA, and it found, and it is tracking this, and you believe that they know this, and this is the reason the government has built so many underground survival facilities. Right. Right. Now, I, just right now, I haven't even announced this yet, but Prophecy Club is soon going to be offering different survival food and survival items and things like that. Well, I called, for example, Mountain House. I called several of them, and from not just one, but from several sources, first of all, they all told me, no, we're not taking any new dealers. I know. Okay? But from several different sources, I've told that the government, our federal government, is buying up all of the survival food that these places can make. The, all of them that they will sell, they are buying it. And it is really difficult to get freeze-dried food, canned food of any kind because the government is buying it as fast as they can make it. And, of course, if the truth be known, probably the government has its own facilities making it as fast as they can. Why are they doing that? Because they know, they know a catastrophe is heading towards the earth. But everything you're saying, Stan, is, is things I've independently verified on my own. In fact, if you go to the White Mountain House website, you'll very quickly see... They're not selling food to the public anymore. They're taking care of their old established dealers, but That's they're right. not taking on any new ones. That's right. That's right. right. And for us to even get any kind of freeze-dried food from Mountain House, we have to get it through their old established dealers that were doing business with them like 10 years ago. That's or, right. Or forget it. That's uh, right. There are no new dealers because the federal government is buying all of the rest of it that they will sell them. They're taking care of their dealers and the feds, and that's it. Okay. We're also seeing a dramatic increase just from plain old civilians like you and me. Well, not only in freeze-dried food, but also water. Now, water, water filters. There's a lot of pressure on water filter dealers. They're, they, they sell them before they, they get them in. Well, I just called uh, Berkey Water Filters because my wife about three months ago, of course she's a prophet, was given a prophecy that there's going to become a bug in the water. And this bug is going to make a lot of people sick, but it's going to kill a lot of people here right. in America. Right. And told people, this is part of the prophecy, but to go get a gravitational filter, water filter. In other words, don't count on electricity or pressure. Okay, Go get a gravitational water filter. So 
I decided rather than just carrying one or two of the Berkey water filters, we would begin to carry all of them. So right. I called my good friend Jim over there. He, we've been doing some business with him for, I don't know, 13, 14 years now, way before Y2K. And the girl says, well, you better place your order quick. And I said, why is that? She says, because right now we are already out of most of our models, and right. there is anywhere from a three- to six-week wait to That's get right. them. And I said, what's going on? She says, we don't know. It started about two years ago. All of a sudden, there's just a ground swells from all across the nation. People are buying our water filters faster, literally faster than we can make them. We've even got some new manufacturers making them. And she says, we can't make them fast enough. And she says, it's not one particular program. It's one, not one particular organization or group. It's not coming from any one particular place. It's just happening all across the nation from all kinds of people. And to me, I think that that is the Spirit of God speaking to the hearts of his people all across the land to get prepared for this bug that's coming on the water. In other words, people want to say, well, when do we leave America? I'll tell you, one of the things you look for is when you start seeing all of the other rats leaving the ship, it's a good time for you to leave. Like, for example, back in the days in Poland, in Germany, when the rise of the Nazi regime was coming up, w there was people that did leave. A lot of Jews did leave Germany and Poland. Oh, yeah. But the ones that stayed behind were the ones that got taken to Auschwitz and Treblinka and Dachau. In other words, when you see people leaving America, get out. But right. the problem is, what John is talking about today is not an American problem. This is a global problem, correct? That's, that's right. It's worldwide, and there's no place I'm totally immune. All right, now let's tie this together with yesterday's broadcast. Brothers and sisters, he's got these two DVDs I'm going to strongly recommend you call and get. 785-266-1112. We'll talk about that in just a second. Yesterday, though, we talked about how he says that the Gulf Stream has stopped. He's put this all into his DVDs. The Gulf Stream has stopped, and that is causing... Well, here you tell him. What's it doing? Well, June uh, 12th, last year, 2010, the Gulf Stream stopped. It has been circulating for more centuries than we know. And the Gulf Stream uh, comes up the east coast of Florida, past Georgia, past South Carolina, gets to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, starts going east by northeast, goes out a few hundred miles, does a loop-to-loop, -loop, peters out and stops. This will change everything by itself. It, quite frankly, nuclear war looks like a pretty good deal compared to the Gulf Stream stopping and the ultimate impact on agriculture and the way people live on this planet. So that's the deal, Stan. Okay, so it can cause weather changes to the fact that we won't be able to get as many crops produced. Right. Many people begin to starve to death, cause the tornadoes, hurricanes, droughts, floods, fires from lightning, tsunamis, volcanoes, all kinds of things. I mean, our... And then you add in, now today you're talking about that there is this mystery planet out there. Here's my question. Could the mystery planet be affecting the Gulf Stream also? Well, absolutely. The mystery planet is what caused the plant, our planet to start warming up in the first place to cause fresh water ice to melt in Greenland and the Antarctic, which was reducing the salt content, the salinity of the oceans, uh, which was the engine. The salt content is what was the engine that drove it initially. So what you're really saying is our problems are really caused by this mystery planet yes, out sir. there. Yes, sir, absolutely. They're all connected. Okay, now, how long do we have before this thing reaches us? I, I don't believe it's going to hit the Earth. No, it's never but, done that. But I believe it, there's going to be a zenith. There's going to be an apex that it's going... So when does it get... To the apex. When does it get to well, where? We're, we're, first of all, we, uh, those of us involved in this work don't give out dates. We talk about a time frame, a time frame which we're already living in. The things are getting so bizarre so quickly. We had 600 tornadoes in April. How much more of a heads up do you need? Things are getting very out of control very quickly. The U.S. government spent nearly 20 years and untold billions of dollars getting ready for this. People listening to you and I talk, Stan, don't have 20 years don't have billions of dollars. They've got whatever resources and time which is left to find a safe haven, stock it with food and medical supplies and water filters, and prepare to live a life where you grow your own food and take care of the people you care about. 
Wow. Okay, let's talk about your DVDs. Now, the name of this DVD, brothers and sisters, grab your pencil right now. You are going to get this. If I can give you an order, <laughs> as, a, as a pastor, as a minister, I would give you one. Okay, get this one. It's called Global Warming, What the Government Isn't Telling You. I'll say it again. Global Warming, What the Government Isn't Telling You. It's almost four hours, two DVDs. You can get it through Prophecy Club by calling 785-266-1112 for a gift of $30 or more. If you call today, you get free shipping. Now, John, give us a laundry list of topics included there. My research is highly condensed. Four hours may sound like a lot. It's really highly condensed, and I, it's a lot of bullet points and a lot of research material I give people on the, on the disc number two. We list, oh, maybe 20 or so books that people could read to get more information, including the Bible, by the way. Kind of give us a bullet point list of what's on the DVDs. The, the bullet point list is a, first of all, and one of the most important things, is an interview with one of the Navy veterans, Mr. Tim Spencer, who saw the classified Navy map when he was in the U.S. Navy. I give the sources that people can look up for themselves to see that our government, in fact, is moving to high ground in Denver and in Utah and in Atlanta to get away from these oceans and have what we call continuity of government contingency planning. I bring to the table all the years of research uh, that have culminated in putting this two DVD set together. Okay. You also talk about the mystery planet, the Gulf Stream stopping. You also talk about Plum Island and the underground bases yes, that are All in the cleanup things. sites. All so there's things. many things you talk about. Once again, it's called Global Warming, What the Government Isn't Telling You. Almost four hours, two DVDs, gift of $30 or more. If you call today, you get free shipping. 785-266-1112. 785-266-1112. Did I give you the phone number? Did I tell you to call? 785-266-1112. 1112, what the government isn't telling you about global warming. I'd recommend you get it. All right, we've got about 60 seconds left. Give us your Sunday punch. What's the very most important thing they need to know? Get your spiritual house in order, first and foremost. That's the most important thing any person can do for themselves and their family. Get their spiritual house in order. Make certain Jesus is in your heart, living a clean life. Okay, how much longer do we have before we're going to see the next level increase. We've already seen this year, really, this year has been the first level, okay? The tsunamis, the uh, earthquakes, the volcanoes, the tornadoes, the fires, the floods. What's we will the next continue level? to see more numbers of earthquakes and, and greater se severity of earthquakes, a greater number of volcanoes and more severe volcanoes. And weather events will continue to spin wildly out of control for reasons that make sense to nobody unless you know what we're talking about, Sam. And the news is going to continue to ignore it. Pretty much, for the most the, part. Well, you, can't, you can't ignore these major events, but they can't ignore what's causing them. Well, they're blaming this on El Nino or Mother Earth or environmental issues. And like I said the other day, it's, uh, it's not Mother Earth, it's Father God. Absolutely. <laughs> the, see, God's in control of this whole thing. All of this is a warning. In other words... The light just went from flashing green to where now it's a solid yellow light. And before long, it's going to turn to a blinking yellow light. And then it's going to turn to a solid red light. And Absolutely. then finally, it's going to be a blinking red light. It's going to be flashing, and Jesus is going to return. Absolutely. Do you think we have 20 years, 30 years, oh, 40 no. years? <laughs> how long do you think we have as a planet? I, 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 as a planet, how long do we have? The planet will still be here. It'll just be dramatically different. And how, people, people how long before extinction or near extinction? When these uh, food harvests get dramatically lost, which, which is happening this year, we will see increases in malnutrition and death by disease beginning this year. Wow. John, thanks for coming on. Glad to have you. Good to Have be to here, have sir. you back again. Thank you. Okay. Once again, folks, it's called Global Warming, What the Government Isn't Telling You. Two DVDs, almost four hours, gift of $30 or more. Call today and get free shipping. Call 785-266-1112. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and your financial gifts.